Good morning, folks. By now, most of you know that ISON did not put on a show for the SDO, either itself or via massive flare induction. We also know it's probably not dead. Some bit of it indeed survived perihelion and is now brightening again on Soho. Those who caught our flare induction potential chat in yesterday's Hangout should look to all the energy ISON will now take with it out of the system. In retrospect, it's so, so close to what Lovejoy did as it went around the sun. JPL is not updated, but the comet is on the exact predicted path way north, up and away. We'll show all the camera angles at the end of the video. We'll start at the RSOE in Ireland, where cyanobacteria, blue-green algae, is blooming in full force. Meanwhile, minor panic ensued briefly in Greece as small fireballs hit the sea. Turned out to be no danger. Then we come way south to South Africa. Yet another hailstorm ripped through the southeastern areas of Africa. And this has been a repeat story the last two months. This time you can easily see what kind of damage might result from hail of that size. Measurement mission pegs multiple areas in Brazil and the surrounding nations is under major flood threat. Check out their flood and landslide potential maps if you're feeling ambitious. Remnants of Alessa here, not letting up really other than the actual wind strength. Moisture sheared south along the coastline and down to New Zealand actually. Believe it or not, a tropical storm at North Australia just flooded parts of Northland. Using the tropical hazard predictions, we can assume we'll be looking at India again next. Solar flares remaining low as I mentioned earlier. The solar magnetic shutdown continues. The sunspots facing Earth further that argument. It's not just fewer spots, but the spots are less active and unrepresentative of their often complex magnetics. Let's hit the central umbral group and you couldn't ask for a more clear magnetic separation. Backside is faded as well. Coming to the southeastern quadrant, remember east-west is flipped on the sun. The groups trailing that central lead have had the opportunity to mix but haven't gotten it together in the center of that group. The big boys are the solar shutdown signature dish, cresting beasts that speak in soft whispers only. Looking at the planets, as mentioned, the Venus-Jupiter opposition lasts for quite a while here. Umbral and coronal blocking fields are closed for the moment, and the low power to boot left us without bigger quakes. But the planets are now complemented with charging solar wind. The speed is still low, but increasing density in orange is causing some minor instabilities much more visible as the smooth curves get dinged here. And as that builds, let's also look to the right side of that coronal hole power, less than a week away from that. In fact, that's her over there on the left side, that dark coming in on the limb. Helio viewer is on a major processing delay, so we'll show full fleet images of ice on yesterday and into this morning. I messed with the SDO shots, but I don't think you're gonna see anything either. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.